Hi, I'm here with Rob Whitehead, the uh, CTO and co-founder of Improbable. Hi, Rob, good to meet you. You too. Rob, what is Improbable and uh, what kinds of problems can you solve? Okay, yeah, so Improbable is a, uh, a London-based technology company. Uh, we're in Farringdon and uh, we build a uh, technology for large-scale simulations called Spatial OS. And uh, the kinds of simulations we deal with are simulations of what we call complex systems, which are uh, simulations of lots of different kinds of things interacting with each other and uh, simulating the kind of what we call the emerging complexity of that. An example is a, a kind of a, a city or an economy. So taking the theory from a lab and converting it into something practical is quite a big step. Like how was that and what are the main learnings you had? So I guess the, the, the real like, kind of applied challenges really are um, the EU in the past has tried these really massive, massive projects to, for example, try and simulate the entire like sort of uh, European economy. And they, they spend like literally like, you know, billions of, of, of euros. They uh, sell it all out to different academic groups and at the end they try and stitch it all together. And it's, it's not particularly like sort of uh, pretty, but the, the real issue is an infrastructural issue of how you take all these disparate models, these different disparate kind of like sort of simulations and stitch them together to kind of really understand the uh, cascading consequences between them. The way academia, academia works often is around like sort of these different silos that don't talk. You know, like sort of the, the waste disposal simulation group and the telecom simulation group don't really understand how they depend on each other. So what makes a good partner uh, for you and, and what are the, the lessons you've learned from working with, with industry bodies? I think like sort of one is a decisiveness to move on kind of these innovative ideas. Um, a lot of these kinds of things, people are very interested in um, like hearing about innovation, but actioning on innovation is something which I find like sort of larger institutions sometimes struggle with. And so really having that kind of like just jumping in the pool and kind of moving forward with things quickly because, you know, you might think that six months is like a short time frame, but for a startup it's an eternity. <laughs> so you've been going three and a half years now. Um, what would be the main, one of the big learnings uh, you could tell yourself three and a half years ago? I think like sort of um, being a technologist by trade, you think that a lot of these issues are kind of technological issues. But as you begin to scale up, like sort of the issues start to look pretty much like any issue of like any company does kind of scaling. You know, sort of I, I was a computer scientist and now I'm a manager and after a certain levels of abstraction, you know, running a company is running a company. Um, but you need to make sure like sort of you can like sort of maintain the, the innovation as you, as you grow. So um, where do you see the company in three years? So like sort of right now we're working on our kind of uh, publicly available platform for Spatial OS whereby any institution or person can you know, download a simple SDK and then simply like sort of utilize potentially tens of thousands of computers in the cloud to simulate arbitrarily many things. The, the dream I have is this idea of, um, you know, I'm an epidemiologist and I want to understand flu contagion in an urban environment. Rather than having to like sort of, you know, make these very simple models, I can pull down a best in class simulation of literally the city of London, plug in my flu contagion model, I don't understand anything about pedestrian commuting, transport infrastructure, traffic, but I can literally simulate what that kind of outbreak would be within, within that city. Wow. And what do you think the sort of consequences of these large scale simulations could be? You mentioned healthcare. Are there any other big sectors you think would be impacted? The things which it really impacts is um, groups which are very hard to kind of experiment and have an imagination. In the digital space, it's very easy to try lots of different combinations and, and different like, sort of approaches to things because software is quite malleable. Physical infrastructure is obviously a very difficult thing to do. You can't just pick up a building and move it somewhere else. So like sort of um, kind of high cost, large physical infrastructure is where kind of the, the main wins are going to be. But then, yeah, you start to go down and then it gets towards things like, uh, like sort of uh, synthetic biology or kind of like sort of uh, disease research, like kind of other areas as well, which is super exciting. Great. Well, thank you. Really appreciate Great. your time. Thanks. Awesome.